Good evening and welcome to Trauma Survivor Cynthia. Wow, you, my subscribers, you guys are blowing me away. I cannot believe I'm at, I believe, 511. Thank you. That really means a lot to me uh, because my hopes are that sharing uh, my life story and trauma experiences that other people will talk about theirs and not have it buried deep inside them because you have to feel it to heal it. I'll be right back and we'll talk about my trauma experiences from 1999 all the way to 2015. I'll be right back. Hang on. Hello and welcome to part three of my traumatizing experiences in life. Um, again, as I told you uh, before my cute little intro of my favorite waterfall, I will be talking about my traumas that occurred between 1999 and 2015. Um, if you have not seen parts one or two, I encourage you to watch them. I have let everyone know that uh, the people who have traumatized me emotionally or physically have been forgiven and it's been a lot easier to move forward in life. Uh, I call 2020 my year of forgiveness. So, um, okay. I appreciate all the comments. Um, if you have any questions, uh, comment down below and I typically respond within 24 hours. I'm thinking of possibly doing a Q&A. I do have an Instagram account and uh, my name on Instagram is my hashtag uh, Dave Sanders stepdaughter, all lowercase letters. So come find me on Instagram and uh, if you have any questions I will try to answer them for you. Ooh, okay, 1999. Um, the first trauma I'm going to talk about is I have a family member who was extremely traumatized by Dave being murdered that she chose to turn to alcohol uh, instead of mental health therapy. So um, I do have an alcoholic family member. This is a tough one. You know, I've been in mental health therapy for 21 years and, and my wish is that everybody uh, could have that same opportunity uh, to talk to somebody about what's going on in their life. This person over a period of 10 years had assaulted me physically um, because I was trying to take the car keys away because this person was intoxicated and wanted to get in their vehicle and drive and I couldn't handle the guilt of knowing if this person were to kill themselves or another family driving on the road intoxicated and um, on one occurrence I was injured so severely by this family member that an ambulance was called and I was very upset and angry that they only sent one. I was not riding in the same ambulance as this person, no. <laughs> so I asked them for my own ambulance and they sent one. But they took us to the same hospital and there was only the sheet curtain between us. But um, that was just one occasion of being assaulted by this person. Uh, the second time was trying to take the car keys away and uh, this person grabbed a baby gate and lifted it up and it hit me in the jaw and again we were both taken to the hospital. It's, uh, I have forgiven her. I know it's, I know that it's the alcohol that causes uh, certain behaviors 
and I love this person very much and I wish they would get help because uh, they're still using alcohol as a coping mechanism um, instead of dealing with the trauma of Columbine. And I strongly, you know, my strong thought is you have to feel it to heal it. You know, if you want to heal from something, you have to, you know, go through the process. And everybody's healing process is different. I agree. But if you need mental health care, I, I urge you to call your doctor and make an appointment right now during COVID-19. They're offering mental health therapy through video chat, just like I'm speaking to you now. Um, get the help you need. You know... You can do it. Okay. I don't know if you noticed. Uh, <laughs> I had to stop the video, but somebody wanted up with me. Uh, she is my emotional support dog. This is Bailey. Say hi, Bailey. She's a golden retriever and border collie mix. <laughs> and she can sense when um, my anxiety is going up or... You know, I get upset when I'm talking about something. She just turned six years old on November 1st. Say hi, Bailey. Say hi to everybody. Can I talk to my subscribers now? Hmm? Can I talk to my subscribers now? Come on, lay down. Okay, a little bit of puppy love while talking about trauma. Doesn't hurt anybody. <clears throat> okay, that was um, trauma number one. Backstory, uh, I remarried um, on, oh gosh, what was it, March 26th of 1999 um, to my second husband and bought a house down in Littleton because I was living in Golden and mom wanted me to live closer to her, so I did. And during this uh, time, married to my second husband, um, we were both working at Jeffco School Security. Uh, so he was a security officer that carried a weapon. And um, there was uh, one instance in ooh, 2005 where he went off his Paxil uh, cold turkey. If you don't know what Paxil is, it's an antidepressant. And you're supposed to um, cut down the dosages and wean yourself off Paxil. He didn't. And he ended up going a little crazy and uh, shaved his mustache off that he had uh, for 20 years. And came to the Columbine Lounge where I was visiting with my friends in his security uniform. Uh, at that time, he was working for Denver School's security department, and uh, he threatened to kill me. Um, he had two guns on him. He had uh, one in his vest, which I later found out was not allowed. He had the other gun in uh, on his belt. Um, very traumatizing uh, experience to go through when your husband threatens to kill you in a bar in front of lots of people. He did go to jail. There was a restraining order. He violated the restraining order. I uh, went back to jail. Uh, his, his second ex-wife bailed him out and uh, they're now remarried. And of course I got divorced. So, um, that was my next trauma in 2005. 2005 was horrible. Um, cause my next trauma is, uh, because Mike, sorry, I didn't mean to say his name. Because this man went to jail for threatening to kill me, uh, I had to put my house up for sale. The one in Littleton that I absolutely loved. And, uh, cause I couldn't afford it. I was doing licensed home childcare and didn't make enough money for the mortgage payment. And while the house was up for sale, it was vandalized. The neighbor boys, uh, right next door, two of them decided to break in through the doggy door and spray paint everything in the house and uh, just trashed it. And that, to me, 
was traumatizing. I know some of you look at it as just a negative experience, but when your home is violated, it's, it's traumatizing. So, let's see, 2005, yeah, we talked about that, and we talked about that, um, in 2014, August 1st, I, uh, had an unfortunate hammock accident, yes, I said hammock, H-A-M-M-O-C-K. I hung my hammock in the aspen trees of Kremlin, Colorado with the yellow uh, bicycle hooks that you hang your bikes from the rafters in the garage. Not knowing they don't hold body weight, I screwed one hook into one aspen tree and the other hook into the other one. And um, the hook at my head bent and let loose and I fell four feet to the ground landing on my spine and was airlifted flight for life helicopter in Colorado from Kremlin to St. Anthony's because I could not feel my legs. And um, I'm still, I still have um, a lot going on and I am disabled permanently because of the hammock accident. Um, I have done a video with uh, photos and pictures of the hammock accident. Um, I'm not sure which playlist they're in, but um, maybe I'll put a picture up here and show you me being loaded onto the helicopter. But um, yeah, I'm still dealing with the, some physical issues and pains from the hammock accident. That was 2014. 2015 was, was, uh, I have a ha had a half brother and, uh, he was my brother from another mother. You get what I mean? My biological dad and my second stepmom give birth to my, my baby brother. Uh, he was born in 1990 and sadly he passed away in 2015 of a heroin overdose. My brother had been clean and sober for six months. Uh, from what I understand, had a fight with his girlfriend and did heroin one more time. And that one more time is what killed him because he was using the same amount of heroin that he was doing when it was a daily basis. And when you use it after being off for six months, it could kill you. And it did. So I lost my little brother. I'm going to say his name, Zach. He was 25 years old. I'm very grateful for those 25 years. I got to be with my brother, Zach. And um, if you have um, a drug addiction, I encourage you to get help because we only get one life to live. This is it. We get one body. We get one life. We're not cats. We don't get nine lives. Can you imagine if that was true? <clears throat> so yeah, um, 2015, rest in peace to my half-brother, Zach. Oh, and then um, I lost my nephew, Austin David Sanders, who was named after Grandpa William David Sanders, uh, my sister Angela's oldest boy. Uh, Austin has passed away of leukemia and he was 20 years old when he passed away. I haven't done the math yet. He was four when Columbine happened and 20 when he passed away. So rest in peace to my sweet nephew, Austin. Um, you might have seen Austin in pictures of the grandkids or um, some videos that are online. <clears throat> Bailey's still on my lap. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> She's my best friend. Okay. Wow. Those are all the traumas um, that I have. 
and they did stop and thank you for watching part three of my traumatizing experiences part four um, I will talk about where I'm at now in life thank you for watching be sure to subscribe like this video if you liked it you can share with your friends and find me on Instagram with hashtag Dave Sanders stepdaughter thank you for watching take care of you bye